Ball is in God. You are listening to the Ball is in God podcast, sponsored by 316 Club. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ball is in God podcast. Yes, episode two is here, season two is here, and I'm excited for our special guest today. I'm excited for what the Lord has for us in this podcast today. Mm. But obviously, I am joined by the one and only, the best co host in the world. You know what I'm saying? The man of energy, the man of God. <laughs> How are you doing, Kenji? Ah, KJ, okay, what an intro, man. What an intro. We are blessed to be back. Felix, welcome. Um, it's such a it's such a privilege to be here, and especially for, with you guys. I know that God's gonna do something special. So welcome, hey. Felix, man. Hey, come on, Thank man. you very much, man. Blessing hey. to be here. Let's go, let's go. And yeah, Felix is here. Uh Kenji, give us a little lowdown on Felix, you know. Let us know what what this baller is about, you know what I'm saying? I hear you, I hear you. Now, Felix is is a dear friend of mine, a brother of a mother of mine as well. Um, and he plays in Wolfsburg in Germany. But honestly, it's been amazing to see firsthand what God has been doing in his life uh, through him as well. Uh, and today we'll be diving into how faith and football merge in his life. So Felix, welcome uh, to this to this podcast, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amazing. But let's go straight into it, man. Um, obviously, we see you shining this season. And honestly, for me, like it's so it's so amazing to see uh, from playing at Wolfsburg, being a starter and, and making your international debut as well um, at 22 years old. Um, we can see the fruits, you know, on the outside. But how does it look like to water that fruit? You know, the seed being your talent, like what does that look like? Yeah, you know, I think in football, like in this sport that God has blessed us to be in, like sometimes we can just think, yeah, I'm blessed by God. I have a gift from God and that everything's just going to happen. But I think through just abiding in God, staying intimate with Christ, and then also like we have to work out. I think it's a mixture of that which then produces fruit. And it's not always going to come straight away. Like for me, it's been a journey. Over the last few years, I've had a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. And yeah, God has really been faithful. Kenji, you've seen it first time, like from being at City, wanting to just play first team games and then actually, by God's grace, being able to leave so, so freely. So like ended in such a good way in the last season. Like I know with a lot of players in their last season, like they don't play or they train with a young team or something. But I was actually blessed to still be with the first team and also have game time. So, so yeah, it was a blessing just how everything's happened. And Wolfsburg last season didn't really play. It was mostly on the bench, just coming on 10 minutes, five minutes. Didn't really get into my rhythm or my stride at all. And literally at the beginning of this season, I was planning to just go on loan but we had a new manager and so I, I came back from not injury, but I kind of put myself out because my knees weren't in a good place at the end of, uh, so two seasons ago. So then, no, at the end of last season. So then I came back to pre-season late. I had like two weeks of training and then the manager was just like, no, I don't need to go on loan. Uh, if you, if you show what, what you can do, then you're going to get your games and, by God's grace, I've just played a lot this season, man. It's been a journey. Come on, man. Come on. I'm, I just want to, I just wonder what, what was some of the practical things that you did during this change? Because many people hear these stories of, yeah, I went through my trials and tribulations and made it through and sometimes left like, ah, oh, what are the things that they did so I can bring that for myself as well? So what are some practical things you did to, that helped you see the change and water your seed? I think for me, it was like a big part of it was just staying intimate with God and really realising that football is not my everything, that who I am is not in football. Like where I don't want my life to be in a way where if I'm playing, then I'm happy. If I'm not playing, then I'm sad. If I play good, then I'm happy. If I don't play good, then I'm sad. And just really finding my identity in Christ, like knowing who I am, knowing and also just having that confidence in even when I'm not playing, that I know that the the gift that God has given me with football, the talent, 
having confidence in that and not thinking too much about what's actually happening in this situation. And yeah, I think just staying intimate with God and every day, like just trying to not focus too much on the situation and just work hard, to be honest. I think in them times where you're not playing, it's easier to to not work hard, to just mm -hmm. be like, oh, I'm not playing anyway. But God really gave me the strength and the peace in that time to, like every time I step on the pitch, that is for him. It's not to yeah. prove anything or this. And that's something that God really helped me with last season where like Dodi Lukabaki was also with me at Wolfsburg. Yeah. He's another Bowlers, uh, Bowlers and Girl member. So we were just helping each other and just receiving so many like revelations throughout the season. Like one of the biggest ones we received was just that we live and play by destiny, not opportunity. So wow. like as long as I work hard, as long as I abide in God, I will reach my destiny. So like these these two keys have been really, really important for, for my development, I would say. Yeah. Yo, bro, that is so powerful. Yeah, that was a bar, bro. That way, come on now. <laughs> that is Say so that again powerful. One more time. Say that again one more time for the people. <laughs> we live by destiny and not opportunity. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? It's so challenging <laughs> when you're when you're that that there because you're working hard every single day for that opportunity on Saturday, right? So you're training every day for the fruit to be to play on Saturday. And when you see that there's a guy in front of you that's playing every week, that you're saying like, well, look, my chances are so limited. When am I going to get my opportunity? It's so hard to keep going. And I see a lot in my teammates as well, you know, the guys that fall off, you know, the guys that stop working hard, that in the beginning of the season, the gym was full. Now the gym's empty. <laughs> coming, to the, coming towards the end of the season, the gym's empty. So I'm thinking like, wow, like, and that's why so, so much more for you, Felix, that's what I admire from you so much is that you work hard regardless of your, what happens, regardless of the, the results that you get, you work hard. And that's why the word of God says, you know, faith without works is what it's dead. You know, it's so dead. And, and it's so important that we continue to work hard in our craft, continue to work hard in your, in your talent, because Felix is reaping the rewards of everything that he's done from mm -hmm. six years old. You know, and that's what any listeners that's listening to this, you know, take take encouragement because I really am from from what you just shared, Felix. Um, but just to go into the time at Manchester City, you know, it's such a big club. Everyone knows them. Um, and through that, like everyone knows who you are. You know, for me, for example, when I was at United, I was the guy that played for Manchester United. You know, I had that identity of that. Like, yeah, Kenji Gori, the guy like you did, you know. Felix, the guy that plays for Man City, you know, what do you feel was your most challenging time at Manchester City, but also amazing um, time as well? Um, I would say, I think it was 2019, where I just finished the season where, like, I kind of played through an injury, but I did really well, like, played Youth Champions League with the old age group, did really well, like, I was having, like, different teams with like even Barca, like all really a lot of big teams coming to to speak to my agent and stuff. But obviously my focus was still at Man City. But then I had like a so I played through an injury and then I actually went out with that injury. And they said it was going to be maybe two or three months, I think they said. And it was just getting prolonged and then it ended up actually being nine months where I was oh, out. Wow. And like he, even the reaction, like it's old oh man, but to the world, it's it's like that. But in that situation, that time was, I've never grew in my faith like that until that point. Like over, I'd say from the ages of like sixteen to to eighteen, I was growing steady in my faith, like through, yeah, just seeking God and having good people around me. But this time when I was injured. I was just going deep with God like never before. And I felt like mentally I came out with that injury like on a different level where I don't remember it. I think maybe one or two days in the nine months where I didn't give 100%. And, and it was more of just a fight inside where like <laughs> them off heat conditioning sessions that you yeah. do when you're injured mm -hmm. and, and you're just like, nah, I'm going to win today. Even though you're just 
on your own. And yeah, just that mixture of like growing spiritually and also mentally, like taking it to new levels. I think at City, that was probably my most, or the time that I developed most like spiritually yeah. and, and mentally. You know, that's, that, that's powerful to hear. And especially at your age, like Kenji said, you're playing for Man City at that time and still is right now currently the best team in England. It's easy to just be like, oh, I've got everything in the world. I don't need, I don't need God. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. you get an injury and it's like, how is this happening to me? God, you've abandoned me. Did But the fact that at that age as well, you said, no, let me dive in deeper and come mm -hmm. out of this stronger is is beautiful to hear. And I'm, uh, a lot of young footballers need that inspiration to say, you don't have to wait until you're 27, 28, 29, 30, when you've gone through the life that you've lived and have to then be like, oh, now I have to like go mm. back to the Lord and seek him. Now you can do it from a young age. It's better to do it from a young age. You know what I mean? It's better to have that foundation from a young age than potentially going through and doing doing things that you may may not want to do in the, uh, in the long run. So yeah, uh, powerful to hear that um, really is. I just want to know though, you trained with the first team, right? What is Pep Guardiola actually mm. like? What is this one of the greatest managers we've seen? What is he like to to work with? So I was the last season at City, I was with the first team like training every day. And I'll just say he's he's a perfectionist. Like he wants everything perfect. And I think that's really good for a team when like you're thinking about every detail, you want to get everything right. And you really see that in him that he's a perfectionist and Tactically, is obviously on a really, really high level. And yeah, I think just that that passion that he has for the details, the passion to for every pass, every little thing, I think that's probably what, what makes him such a great manager. That's what I would say. Wow. Now, man, I, could, like Pep, like I look at Pep and think, wow, what it would be like to be coached by him. You know, just to, I just want to... I think to myself, like, I just want to experience for just one session. Just want to know like what it's actually like because everybody says the same thing as you and obviously what we see on, on, on TV is like the same thing. Um, he's just a perfectionist. Like he needs, he's on the side screaming if that pass isn't to the correct foot, right, you know? Yeah. So Genji, that... Genji, they had just won, I think, the Cowboy Cup and I saw Pep run up to the Raheem Sterling and start doing up. Mad he shouldn't be doing, do, do, do. I was just like, <laughs> this guy, don't he rest? Do you see not rest? I remember Robin telling a story. I don't know if he was joking or not, but apparently Pep called him in the middle of the night to talk about tactics with him. And he's just <laughs> like, Bob, go to sleep, you know? <laughs> so yeah, like Pep just seems like, he just seems like next level. And I can I can understand why. And it goes back, even goes back to what uh, Felix was saying earlier about putting in the work and, 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 mm. and, and grinding as well. Pep just, that's what he does. Like, you know what I mean, I don't think there's a moment where he's not thinking about the next game, the next, the next uh, title, the next whatever in football. He's there thinking about it. So yeah, yeah, that was to me mad as a young player just to see that in action, you know. Um, but uh, talking about managers, <clears throat> I was also a football manager at one point. Um, why? When I, when I say that, I mean I play football manager um, and. <laughs> <laughs> and, See and, me, I was like, I was like, all right. <laughs> Gaffer. <up. laughs> and a fun fact, um, I actually signed you in Football Manager 19 um, back in the day. You were amazing. League One Championship, you were my guy. You know what I mean? Mm. You were my guy. I was like, Felix? I was like, yes. And the reason why I say that is because I noticed your move from Man City to Wolfsburg. I was like, wait. That's my that's my brother Felix from from Everton. <laughs> go on, kid. Go on. So I just want to know, Felix, what happened with your move to Wolfsburg? What transpired? I know you're, uh, and how did it all go down in the end? Yeah. So obviously, I was my contract at City was finished. I didn't renew, and yeah. So there was quite a few teams that were interested, and when it got to the end of like when I was going to decide the main two teams that I was that were in contention was Bournemouth and Wolfsburg and these times Bournemouth was still in championship 
And yeah, I spoke with both managers, got a feel for it. And yeah, I remember it, it was, like it was yesterday, literally. It was a Wednesday and I was literally to God. I was like, God, I'm going to decide. And I just pray that whichever way, like if it's not your will, then block it. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to decide for Bournemouth. And I, I want, I'm not even doing this from a feeling like, I just, I'm just going to decide. And if you don't want it to, to happen, then block it. So made the decision on Wednesday and then Thursday, get a call from Bournemouth and it's like, oh, something's happened. Yeah, the deal's not possible. Uh, this player was meant to be leaving and he's got a big wage or something. And then I was like, God, I know where you want me to be. <laughs> so I was mm-hmm. like, I was really happy. I was really happy because obviously Wolfsburg, the Champions League as well was a was a yeah, really amazing move. So yeah, I decided for Wolfsburg. And then the crazy thing is on the Saturday, so I decided then. And and on the Saturday, Bournemouth came back, they were like, No, we can still do the deal. So then to me I was like, Okay, God, you've already said you've already said where you want me to be, so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna obey. That's that's mad. You know, cause you know Wow how many people go after something, don't get it. God's leading them somewhere, but then the same thing comes back to them again, like whether it be an ex-partner or whether it be an opportunity that didn't go well. And they would take that because at, at your age, Premier League football, Premier League wages over moving moving back to Germany uh, for Wolfsburg, I think many people, I think many people go back to Bournemouth, you know? So having that obedience is, was key in in everything, man. That's 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 brilliant. Yeah, and that's the that's the crazy thing. So at that time they were actually in championship. Oh, but championship. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, my bad. My bad. So when I actually yeah. went to Wolfsburg, and this I decided for Wolfsburg. So in this season, my first season at Wolfsburg, I wasn't playing. So mm. someone can be seeing it as like, look, Bournemouth, they're doing amazing. In the end, they ended up getting promoted. So, like, in, in my mind, it could have been like, oh, look, I missed out. Also, we didn't have a great season fighting for to stay in the league even at, at most of the end of the season. And then I was just like, nah, I'm not going to think like that. Like, God, I know I know what you said. And, and yeah, I think this season has just been a, yeah, a testament to, to God's plan and, yeah, his ways, I guess. Amen, bro. Amen. That is so powerful, you know, and I can so relate that into my life, like from when I moved to, to Portugal. So I also, um, my contract was running out of Swansea and uh, we just got relegated to the championship. And uh, and they were like, uh, yeah, we want to offer you a new contract uh, to stay at Swansea in the championship. Da, 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 da. You're going to be, you know, all this talk about how you're going to be, you know, playing and, and you know you're going to get your exposure but in my mind I was like I've been here for five years like I've still not got my op- real opportunity I've made my Premier League debut but never really pushed on from there and I remember um, getting a call from um, from a coach out here in Portugal Costinha and um, I actually share this on my on my on my episode but that's what's so crazy because God ended up telling me and sharing with me like I want you to go. I want you to go to Portugal because there was peace there. There was like something was calling me to there. And now I have to let Swansea know that I'm, can you please just let me go to, to Portugal for free? Because they could ask money. They could ask all sorts um, to try and to try and make this deal happen. Ended up going there and I went there and I was on the bench. Like, <laughs> it's just crazy. Like, but that's the time where I met God. That is when Mm -hmm. God revealed himself to me the most. He put me on the island of Madeira and revealed himself to me. So what might not, what might look like, oh, I should have made this decision or should have made that decision ended up being the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because I saw people that in my position, for example, Daniel James, he was, um, he was then playing because I had left. You know, and and now then he ended up making his move to United. So everyone was like, Kenji, mm. look at how he had, like um, that could have been you. And I'm like, it could have been, but that wasn't my journey. That wasn't my where God wanted me to be. You know, so if anybody is listening to this, just know like 
you made the right decision for where you are right now and continue to listen to what God is telling you to do in order to fulfill the destiny that is that you that you've got on on your life and um, because Felix yeah. shared it so powerfully man what a quote that was man um uh, yeah. but but yeah just really felt to, mm -hmm. to share that as well um but talk to me how it is like to to also play with your brother you know I think that's such a unique um unique thing to to play like I've got a younger brother that I would love to 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 play with him but what is it like for you yeah so we obviously we play that together at City as well a few times and yes it's a blessing man because we've we've always played together since we were I don't know four or five and yeah we've got that that chemistry we know how we each other play and stuff and yeah, just to see like, for example, when Lucas scores or, or I score and we're just so happy for each other, even just after playing well in a game, we're just so happy for each other. And yeah, it's something I definitely don't take for granted. Hey, nice. Who, who is, there's a little bit of a probably, is there a little bit of a super rivalry between you two? Like... Or is it if you uh, just all good, like both of you just want to see each other win? I think it was more when we were younger. Yeah, I think now, yeah. now we just we just support each other. Like, of course, we supported each other back then as well. But obviously, we're in different positions. I think when we were younger, we played more. Sim we were both playing wing. He played strike sometimes. I played midfield sometimes. But now we've got our set positions. Like, I want to assist him. He wants to get the goals. Obviously. Yeah. And obviously mix it up as well. But nah, I think not as much as, as when we were younger, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And how is your relationship with your bro? Like, like, like through football, has that like made you guys closer? Like, are you guys ride or die? Are you, are, are you with each other all the time? Like, what, what's your relationship like with him outside of the football pitch as well? Yeah, so me and Luke's have always been quite close. I think since we moved to Wolfsburg, we've got like a lot more close and we live together now as well. So hey. like we're, we're always with each other. And and recently, I'd say the last few months, like the way God's been working in Luke's life, even though he's going through a hard time, like he's growing in his faith so much. I think we're getting on better than we've ever got on. And yeah, man, I'm just, even though... I, I still pray that, that Luke's will come back quick and that I can just play with him again. Mm -hmm. And just even for him to just be out there on the pitch again, I, I'm still so thankful to God for what he's doing in Lucas. Like, it's it's really amazing to see what God's doing in Lucas's life, especially the last few months. So that, that was something I was going to ask. I was like, how has your relationship with your brother impacted your own faith as well? Because having... I've I've got an older sister, um, so the the dynamics are different, you know. But brothers and brothers in 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 reality, and brothers in but also brothers in Christ, like that must be an um, just an amazing thing to have. Yeah, it's, it's special, man. It really, is special. Even just when we pray together, the few like the Bible studies we've done together, and I felt like there was a. Not a spiritual attack, but the enemy really didn't want us to get to that to that place where we're able to pray with each other, where we're able to speak about the word. And we we rarely spoke about it in unity in the past. Like it was always more I think because I I I was probably a bit more mature in my faith from a younger age. I think it's difficult because it can seem like I'm just trying to show like I'm right. And he's the older brother, so it's sometimes hard to take. But I think now we're just at that place where we listen to each other a lot better than we used to. Like, we just speak about the revelations God has given us. And and it, we're on a really, I'd say, a really good journey to just keep growing in our faith and keep growing in our relationship with each other as well, man. That's powerful, man. That's so, so powerful. Even it's just so beautiful as well that you guys have got such a close connection with each other, um, especially through what you guys both do professionally because you guys both know what you guys are experiencing every day. You know the trials, you know the tribulations, you know what you guys are, are, are moving through. And it's so amazing that you guys can 
kind of bounce off each other, you know, pray for each other, encourage each other through that process. Because sometimes it's not easy, especially you playing now and him being injured, for example. Like, how is that for you now as well? Like, you're absolutely buzzing, but then you know that he's going through it. Like, how does that, how does that look like? Yeah, it's obviously, I try not to show it or not to tell him too much that obviously I love playing with him. I want to play with him because obviously he's not playing at the moment. But just like I've been there with with injuries or not even injury, an injury that I've struggled with in the past. And I know it's it's hard, especially when you're seeing like we're, we've had a couple of games now where we've, we've played really good football. And when he was playing, like we weren't playing so good. So he wasn't really getting the service he needed. And now he's seeing that like the service is there, but he's not actually able to be there. I know it can be frustrating for him, but I'm just really encouraged by how he's growing in his faith that like one thing I would say is that God loves to prepare and then bless. And that's what mm. I've seen in my life. And that's what I really, really believe for Lucas that when Lucas comes back from this, like I don't think people are going to be ready. And that's not even Amen. to put pressure, but that's just on like God is faithful. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future with Lucas, but I know that God is really preparing him right now in this season. So, yeah, man, I'm able to, because we had the similar injury, so I'm able to help him in some aspects in that as well. But, uh, yeah, man, I just can't wait to, to be That's playing with huge. him again, man. That is so huge. I think you've, you've, you've mentioned it a couple of times now. I kind of want to go into it, you know, because... Fortunately, you know, by God's grace, I've not had any injuries or any long-term injuries. And I know that it can, you know, do a lot to players. You know, you see a lot of players go through through it mentally, um, through that as well. And and they say that, you know, people not get coming back the same and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, but how how did you manage your injury? Um, so with me, it was... It was a long process where, so I had tendonitis in both my knees. So, mm. like, it's for those who have had it, they know that it's yeah. one of the worst pains you can have. And I had that from the age of 18. So, like, there was so many ways we were trying to figure out to get it better. And even in them nine months that I was talking about, I came back, but I was still had pain. And... It was only the end of last season, which is why I, I left or I put myself out earlier, uh, was to to train with the right person to get the right treatment. And by God's grace, I found the right doctor, the right physio, and they helped me a lot. So even right now, it's not 100%, but it's like so much better than it was before. And yeah, like in that time, just instead of maybe finishing the season and then just having that time in between the seasons, like I felt like God led me to to stop a bit earlier and and really just grind. Like I didn't get a like really time off. So I was just working throughout the the time in between the seasons. And God was just really helping me, giving me the strength and also giving wisdom to the physio to to know what to do because mm tendonitis can be tricky like I with me it was dealt with like a lot off the off the book like what the book says you should do with tendonitis and that never worked for me so it was a bit like we didn't really know what to do <laughs> I went through PRP like mm -hmm. six times each side like was oh, crazy and and then yeah having some treatments with a, a doctor in Munich uh, Dr. Farp is his name last year like that also helped a lot but yeah it, it's been a it's been quite a journey and I believe that God is still going to bring complete healing mm -hmm. but yeah injuries is injuries are never easy but I believe that even if it's not God's will like he will use it and mm -hmm. I can really see that in my in my walk with God and even just through Lucas as well so yeah Yo, that's that's powerful. Like, um, 
just from listening to you, your faith is so strong and, and, and the belief that God can do anything within your life is 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 there. And I'm just listening, I was like, how did how did it start? Like mm-hmm. you're a young man with this much faith already. How did you become a Christian and how did this all start? Because everything's gotta start from somewhere, right? And this, yeah. I, I'm just curious, bro. I wanna hear because your passion and love for the Lord is 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 brilliant. Thank you. And yeah, for me, it started when I was around 15, 16. I always went to church when I was younger. I thought I was a Christian. Uh, went to church every Sunday, tried to be good, like just focus on my education, focus on football. And by God's grace, he helped me in both aspects. And yeah, I think I just got to the point when I was like 15, 16, where I decided to get baptized because I just wanted a new like a fresh start with god and ever since then god has just been working on me man like helping me grow in my faith putting the right people around me nathaniel better has been a big part of that he's uh he was with me at city and um yeah just obviously he's a pastor's son so he was already a, a bit more in his faith and he was just helping me then through borders and god as well down the years and yeah, man, it's just been a journey. Sometimes it's been a bit slower. Sometimes I like through them nine months growing a lot in my faith. And also, I think it was, I don't know if it, I think it was two years ago, I went through a stage where I almost lost faith. And I'm, I'm quite a deep thinker. So there was a stage where I was just overthinking so many things, had so many questions about faith, like even like just from the Christian apolo- apologetic side, like they start and I found a lot of answers, like just evidence for the Bible. Like a lot of people think that it's a blind faith, but if you actually research the evidence for the Bible, it's crazy to see how, like how valid everything is, how everything intertwines, links together. And through that time of, doubting and stuff I, I got so many like revelations so many um yeah I found out so many things but I think the part that got me through that time was the revelation that there's certain things we can get answers to a lot of things but there's certain things that it's above us it's above our ways it's above our thoughts like the bible says like his ways are higher than our ways and like just through that time I just grew as well and and it's really encouraging when you have more knowledge because it's it reaffirms your faith and then also when you're able to share that with others it's like I'm sure you've had it Kenji where maybe you're sharing on a certain topic and it's like you're speaking to yourself like Mm -hmm. you're just renewing your mind and Mm -hmm. and it's it's really a blessing to be able to share knowledge and and just renew your mind with it as well and this is probably one of the things that's helped me as well in my faith wow that's powerful bro that is so so powerful and what is the biggest thing that you've learned in your walk with God so far that's a good question what's the biggest thing I've learned Mm, I would say just to abide in God like to really seek after God man and and there's there's stages in your life where maybe you're not in the word as much but always getting into his presence reading the word praying like and not doing it as like tasks but actually in in your relationship with God and I'm trying to focus on I'm talking a lot but trying to focus on like that's that it's a relationship that it's not mm. like just religious act that you're doing that he, like God is a person like the mm-hmm. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit and we're meant to have a relationship with him so I don't really know what that point was but nah <laughs> amazing bro nah bro nah I amazing. Hear it. we hear it man we hear what amazing because it's such a good point where you talk, speak about relationship because when you're building a relationship with someone you know when you're building it like you want to hear from them like you can't build a relationship without hearing from that other person so yeah. 
you know, from me, for example, like in my walk with, with Christ, it's a, like in the beginning, it was a lot of me talking, like a lot of me, like trying to get under, like, Lord, like this, 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 Lord, this, Lord, mm. but not sitting in his presence and actually listening to what he has to say to me, you know, and, and we as Christians, you know, like we, we on this journey, but it's a relationship. And that's what I find so powerful of what you just shared there, that it's just cultivating and, and, and growing that relationship with a person. You know, and, and that's really, really powerful. Is there a specific moment that you can recall that it impacted you the most? Um, I don't know about a specific moment, but I think just when you when you're really in God's presence, you're just experiencing God and it's like you can't describe this feeling. This feeling and just it's, it's more than a feeling. It's so much more than a feeling where you're just realizing truth and you're just in his presence and you're just like in awe. And I think that getting to that place and also just the revelation of that place, because a lot of the time, like we want to have feelings and it's, it's a dangerous place to be when you're relying so much on feelings. But when you're kind of going off truth for your feelings, then it's, it's easier to get to them places where it's like, I realize the truth that his presence is with me. And then that feeling might come, it might not come. But just, I'm like, I try not to live my life from feelings, but from truth, which is uh, yeah. in the word of God. No, that's that's so true, man. And we live in a world right, right now where feelings is like, it rules all. Like, if I don't feel like this, then that means it's this and therefore I will stop doing it or I'll I'll take this thing to make me feel better or I'll do that thing to make me feel better. Hmm. And all in all, it just leads to more destruction and more, more darkness in that person's life because they want to feel something. Hmm. And God is not a God of feelings, he's a God of truth is what you say. And, and oh, living from that truth makes you know that actually I could feel a certain way today, but I know the sun comes up in the morning. So that feeling can't rule me. That feeling can't decide or dictate where I go Amen. because, like you say, God's destiny is more important than my feelings. Amen. It, it just it just really is because God's destiny is for my own good, hmm. and for for the not just my own good, but also the good of the people around me. My my fiance, my my parents, my friends, family, even hmm. the stranger down the street. You know. God's got destinies for us all. And if we walk in that, if we, we, if we follow that, the impact that we have on everyone around us is, is tenfold compared to mm. today. I don't feel like, like giving mm. that person a hug today. I don't feel like loving my partner. Like mm-hmm. imagine that going mm. through life, just through feelings. It's mad. Like, if, wow. if you really speak it out, it's mad. It's it's mad. <laughs> I think that's why that, that Bible verse in Romans 12 verse two is, it's like, one of the biggest foundations of the faith where we need to be renewing our mind in these truths and these revelations because like sometimes we forget we're still in this world like even though we have our faith through Christ we're no longer slave to the world we're no longer slave to sin but there's a war there's a battle and even though we can always say as Christians yeah we've won the victory it's true we've won the war but we haven't won every battle and that's why we need to abide man that's why we need to renew our mind with these truths because the devil is there, man. He he really wants to make us fall and wants to yeah, steal, kill, and destroy. That's that's his goal. So true, man. So true, man. But what is your what's your favorite Bible verse actually? And why? Hey, you're, you're coming out with some good questions, can't you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, I think. I think it used to be Romans 8.28, but I feel like now it's... Share it, Romans man. Share 12. it, share it, share it. Yeah, so Romans 8.28, where it says, and in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. I think for me, especially earlier in my faith, it, it just gave me so much peace. Like even now as well, but I think then it was just like, I know that no matter what happens, the good, the bad, because I'm in Christ I'm, and I'm living according to his purpose, like he's working all things out for my good. So like he's sovereign. 
he knows everything. So I, I can trust him. He's worthy to be trusted, you know? So, yeah. Wow. That's, that's mad. Yo, nah, I'm just, I'm just enjoying. Like, there's times where it might be silent for like two seconds on the part. Guys, it's not because we don't know what to say. <laughs> We're processing. We're just basking, We're just basking We're in what he's saying because but he's I, I've, got, I've got another one. I've got another one, KJ. Yeah, go on. What is God telling you in this season of your life right now? Um, I think I'm in a season where God really wants me to have a balance of wisdom and sharing truth where I believe that I believe that there can be circumstances where we don't share things out of like oh it's not so wise to share this at this point and there can actually be situations where it's wise not to share it. Like the Holy Spirit is doesn't want you to share something at a certain point. And especially just with, yeah, with certain topics that are a bit more touchy. Mm-hmm. I believe that God is, he's leading me to be, to be wise, but then at the same time be sensitive to him where it's like, okay, I'm going to share this truth. James 1.19, it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak mm. and slow to become angry. You know, we live in a culture where me, for example, I love to talk, you know, I've, <laughs> I've loved to talk. And in this, like God is telling me, Hey, Kenji, I need you to be quiet, man. I need you to listen, listen to your wife when she speaks. Don't just start putting things of what you think that she's thinking. You know, it's like, listen to what people are actually saying. And then through that, we can get the wisdom to actually share what we need to say and mm. what that person needs to hear. Um, because we don't want to talk of our own knowledge, like our own understanding, our own no. wisdom. You know, we want to speak from what God has to say on this topic and what God has to say in this moment for that specific soul and for that specific person, you know, that is dealing with something that that we might be able to see in the spirit or maybe God reveals that to us for, in order for us to share to them and for us not to become angry, you know? And because like... We don't repay evil with evil. You know, we've got to make sure that we um, are slow and that we're sensitive to the spirit, you know? And I just wanted to add that of what uh, Felix beautifully shared and what you just shared as well, KJ. So yeah. powerful, man. Mm. Yeah, man. Like, it's, yo, fam, it's crazy out here, man. <laughs> it's, the world The world can, can, can pull up some crazy things, but Christ has conquered all. So just having mm. that confidence... We can navigate this world because at the end of the day, we won't be here for for longer, you know, like for much longer. Mm. Things things will change uh, in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? True. Come on now. Oh, um, yo, you know, we have conversation and you're just like, where where'd you go from there? I don't know where to go. <laughs> I've lost track. Um, guys, if you're if you're if you're loving what you're hearing, comment in the comment section below. What, what you enjoy, what you're inspired by, what are you hearing that, that really touches your heart? We would like to know yes. um, if you've got any questions um, moving forward, any topics that you want us to talk about, let us know and we'll bring it up in either a team talk. Uh, you'll find out about that very soon and um, or on one of the podcasts with some of the different ballers. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel this, I'm going to switch switch tracks a bit and, and take it onto football. Because I remember watching an interview of yours when you joined um, Wolfsburg, Felix. And you mentioned the number 22, the, the, number that you, the number that you wear now. And you said God was drawing you to that number. Mm. Have, you, have you discovered what that was yet? Or is that still He's 22 now as well. <laughs> 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 now, to be honest, when I look back now, I don't know if I was just seeing the number 22 like in different places. I, I always saw it on my phone like almost every night before I went to sleep, like 2222. Two, two, two. But to be honest, I think I don't know if that's from God. Maybe it was just in my mind. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. also, Lucas was number 22 when he came on loan to Wolfsburg. Yeah. So that was also nice. And to be honest, I'm not like superstitious, like, oh, this number, like, yeah. nah, it's not like that. But yeah, it's, it's a nice number. And um, yeah, <laughs> not much fair to say. Enough, I love the honesty. You know, some people like to be like, "Oh yeah, so it was because <laughs> I saw the clouds open up and then the number two, like twenty-two doves came down." Like you know, someone would try and style it out. 
I love the honesty. Thank you. <laughs> no, but there is actually one thing because uh, someone spoke into my life. I remember it was a couple of years ago and one of the things he said uh, he saw was like Kaka and Kaka was obviously number 22. So that was, mm. that was a bit, that was a bit <gasps> mad. Yeah. yeah, big up, big up, man. Maybe, maybe it's a inkling, maybe it's a hint to Ballon d'Or, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> God <Godwin. laughs> um, So yeah, um, thanks for sharing that, my brother. I uh, enjoyed that. So you played, you both you and your brother played for England, but now play for Germany in the in the men's national team. Also, big up on your debuts as well, and and, and getting some some caps for for Germany. Gee. Um, <laughs> what what made you pick Germany over England when it came to that decision of the men's team? Like, what what was that? Um, I think for me, I just I had a few years where I was really just in between like my mind would be saying one thing then another time it would be saying a different thing and I just wanted to make a decision I just wanted to go with what I believe is where God wants me to be and yeah I just said let me make a decision and and yeah that's the decision I took and I believe that it is within God's will and I believe that yeah that it, it's paid off like so far by God's grace and I pray that it's it's a yeah continuous blessing in my career yeah, I love that how how are you feeling for the future of the national team right now because you've got a load of young exciting players coming through uh, yourself and your brother uh, Musiala who's had a similar journey to yourself going to England and coming back to Germany um, mm-hmm. you've got Bella Katrop um, Makoko oh, so you when you start reeling them off like you, you've got a really yeah. young talented team coming through there how are you feeling going forward with these crop of players about Germany and, and your prospects of winning the Euros and, and the World Cup yeah man it's it's really exciting to be honest we, we have a lot of talent coming up and yeah that that is the goal obviously to go to the Euros and by God's grace win the Euros and yeah man it's just I'd say just exciting, man, to see all the talent that is coming up and also the players that are already there that are, have immense quality. Yeah, man, just exciting, I would say. Powerful, Brilliant. man. Brilliant. That's amazing. Brilliant. Honestly, I hope I hope you guys do something special. Unless it's against England, then we might have to have a conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, you know nah, I'm I mean? team Germany for that one. Oh, uh, Kenji, you know, why you do me like this, man? Yes, Kenji. Team Germany, my brother Felix, against, man. Hey, first is against Jamaica, you know what I mean, because of his national team. And now it's against England. Uh, you know what? I don't think me and Kenji sporting-wise, besides Man United, see eye to eye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think, hey, I think we've, we're playing against Jamaica in the summer, actually. Oh, hey, have you seen the new kits? I'm telling you, the new kits. Yeah, I'll have, to swap, I'll have to swap shirts still. Oh, get Mikel Antonio as one. <laughs> You want, you want it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be so kind, unless you want, unless there's someone else you want to get for your wall, that's that's up to you. And I'm just, just I'm, <laughs> put, put out a request out as a co <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Now nah, we'll see. We'll see how I feel on that day, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if, you, if you beat them, then yeah, I think if you beat them, you definitely need to give it over. I need some comfort, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some kind of recompense um so felix we do a thing on the podcast where we get you to name your all-time five-a-side team oh mm. is it is it any players like so any players from any generation goalkeeper four oh. outfield players what are you saying bro? okay i would put in goal Manuel Neuer. Mm. Okay. He's German. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously so good. Especially because five aside, you need some with the yeah. ballers or even the keeper. Mm. Um, then centre back, I would go Van Dijk. Mm. Ooh. It- Oh, ah, I like this. Interesting, interesting. 
Yeah, Van Dyke. Uh, okay. Ah, cool, cool. Locked in, then locked in. Got, okay. Then we've got Messi. No, oh, Messi. gotta be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, best player ever lived. We need someone who's gonna do some dirty work in there. <laughs> I think Pete Kante. Kante, oi, you know what? You know what? Kante I in a five aside. Oh, he's gonna Kante get around crazy. He's just everywhere. <laughs> he'll just be everywhere. Imagine, he'll get everywhere. You get about. Oi, think of how yeah. much co- uh, pitch that he covers on an eleven side pitch. Imagine five aside. It's done. And then, then I've got. I'm gonna say Ronaldo in there as well. Cristiano. Oh, Ronaldo. oh yeah. All right, you know what, yeah? Ronaldo and Messi on one team is always cash money. But then you got yeah. Kante and Van Dijk like doing up the defensive and dirty work. And then, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yo, Kenji, you went all out attack. What are you thinking about your team now? <laughs> bro, my att- bro, I don't need defenders in my team, bro. <laughs> right, I don't need no team? defenders. I've got Kaka. Okay. I've got Messi. I've got you don't have Ronaldinho? Yeah, you had Ronaldinho. And then I think I had R9. Yeah, you went no, you went no. I saw you went like no. Nah, bro, we've got we've got the ball. <laughs> bro, you think Messi and Ronaldo track it back? <laughs> okay. We don't need tracking back, bro. We've got the ball. We That's just score. Yeah. We just score and then get the ball back and score again. What? So that's not how five percent works. You don't get it back after you stop. <laughs> you can Yo. have the ball, bro. Don't worry. You think it's traded? Right. We'll read it. <laughs> Kaka will read it back there, bro. All right, man. That I would so... love to see these like actually happen. Like just these five aside teams go up against each other. Imagine that. You know what did they bring back? Was it Masters League? Like grown up, we had like the retired footballers play against each other. Yeah, bring that bro. back, man. You know what was mad? You know what's mad? I used to go to them. You know, my dad used to play. He used to oh, play really? for Huddersfield and that. So I used to go to them. So I used to go and oh. I used to be like, yeah, this is lit. The whole, st- it, was used to, it used yeah. to be amazing, man. Oh, man, bring it back, man. I used to like, love it. Away. So many things take away from us. Um, right, we're, quite, we're, 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 we're getting towards the end. There's, oh, there's, there's so much that we'd want to just go through, man. You've just been actually brilliant, brilliant guest, Felix. Thank you so much. Thank um, you, you're getting onto the score sheet now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What have you got a favorite goal that you've scored? I think yeah, this goal against Augsburg, uh, like the header. last minute. Yeah, last minute. Bro, I was gassed. I'm so happy with that. Hey, you did the, uh, you did the, the is that the ball isn't cast celebration? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, yeah, man, that was that was an amazing, amazing game. Because, like, that game, I came back from the national team. Mm. Obviously, it was an amazing time. And then just to get a last-minute goal like that was, was special, man. It was special. That's amazing, bro. That's amazing. I was gassed when I saw that, bro. But honestly, Felix, it's been amazing having you on, uh, sharing the wisdom, what God is doing in your life. It's just been so amazing, bro. And we're just so proud of you. Uh, so proud of everything that you're doing as well. I just, I just also love how, um, how you show Christ through your social media, mm. and that He gets all the glory, you know, for everything that you've achieved and everything that you're going to achieve as well. And that just shows your humility, you know. But I know that that humility comes from somewhere, you know. God takes you on a process. Um, Because Mm. God definitely took me on a process uh, to humble myself. And that that process looked like me not playing. That process looked like um, me not not getting any game time, you know. And what did that process of humility really look like for you um, in your walk? Yeah, I think it's similar where you just realise... And I think it comes down to identity a lot as well. Like God revealing certain things about identity to me is like one thing I'm really big on is not seeing myself any bigger than anyone because I'm a footballer. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'd say it's difficult in the world we're living in because 
I think football is probably the, the biggest god in the world right now. Everyone mm -hmm. worships football. Everyone wants to be a football for, footballer and, yeah, has that dream. And, and it's easy for footballers to think, like, because of all this attention, everyone wants a picture or signature of a lot of big players, like, that someone might think, yeah, I'm this... I'm this big person, like I'm better than someone else. And that's something I really don't want to be part of my life. And, and I think for after football as well, when your identity is in Christ, it's a firm foundation, man. Amen. Like you can leave the game from a place like, I don't rely on people asking for pictures or this attention to fulfill who I am or to give me that mm -hmm. true peace and joy, but my joy, my peace, my Huge. identity is in him. And that's something, yeah, that it, it makes you humble and, and it makes you realise that like sometimes when, when people hear, yeah, I give him the glory, they don't understand it because they think, look, you've worked hard. You yeah. should give yourself some, some props for that. And I'm like, okay, I can see what you're saying, but like every breath I take is from God. Amen. How can it be... Like for my glory, because without him, I wouldn't even have the opportunity. And then he also so gives me the strength. He gives me the protection. He gives me the confidence and all these things are from God. That's why he deserves the glory. And that's why I believe that God has called me and called footballers to, to share the truth with the, with the platform, because there's no way I can have this platform and just be just it be about me because i feel i feel like that would be dishonoring god man so, yeah. hallelujah man Come on. hallelujah like that, that is so that. so good hallelujah um what advice would you give to any christian footballer um out there right now listening to this I'm, i'm gonna i'm gonna be very boring no it's not boring but i'm just gonna say <laughs> like it's it's simple even though it's not simple like just like when someone says trust God it's simple but it's not simple when you're actually in them situations and for me my advice is just seek God abide in him in your relationship with God and yeah just keep seeking after him and work hard work hard mm. we need to work hard man so good bro so things. good mm. seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added to you and I just want to speak that over anyone that's listening to this right now. Um, Felix, thank you so much, bro. That's so, so powerful, bro. So, so powerful. Thank you, man. Brilliant. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. <sighs> we could go on forever. We really could. But unfortunately, um, we, we cannot, people. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, before we go, Kenji, uh, can you close us out in prayer and, uh, and, and, and pray over our, our, our brother Felix here as well? For sure, for sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our lives and we thank you so much for this platform, Ballers in God. You know what you're doing through us, Heavenly Father. And we pray for every single person that's listened to this podcast, Lord. Lord, you have told them specific words, specific messages that you want to share in their lives. And I pray that everybody will open their hearts to receive what you have for them, Heavenly Father. Lord, we've heard today an amazing, um, your son speak, Heavenly Father, and we know that you're working through him. May you continue to show him exactly what he needs to see in this season of his life in order to fulfill his destiny that you've called him upon. We know that his identity is not attached to playing. We know his identity is not attached to anything that the world can offer, but is in you, Heavenly Father. May you continue to just mold him, shape him, encourage him to become the person that you've called him to be. We thank you so much for his life. And we thank you so much that we get to even come together right now that because your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are here in our midst. And we just pray, Lord, that your spirit will impact the people that you've called in this platform to, to really go after your heart, go after the things of you. Because we know as we seek you, we will find you. And as we um, seek you with all of our hearts, you will be there to, to answer, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for this revelation and understanding. 
May you fill us up with your Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Oh, people, Amen. people. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you, Felix, for spending time with us. We really enjoyed that. Guys, make sure you go um, <clears throat> send him some love on his Instagram. Send him some prayers during the, for, for the season and the, and the preseason and, and the rest of his career. Um, remember to smash the like button on the YouTube video. Subscribe to the Ballers and Guard YouTube channel. If you're listening to this via Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts, whatever, make sure you like it. Make sure you download it. Make sure you let people know that you've come and listened to Ballers and Guard podcast. Every little helps with us. We want to make this one of the best football podcasts in the world. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't stop yes. just in Amen. the area or whatever. We stop. We're in the world. We want to be yes. up there. Yes, we, we declare the that. Yeah. We declare yeah. that. And also any... Sorry, KJ, to cut you there. Mm -hmm. But if any football or semi-pro football that's listening to this, please message uh, Ballers in God on Instagram. Um, because we have so much going on behind the scenes as well um, from coming together every week where uh, a couple, couple of weeks ago, Felix shared such an encouraging, powerful message on identity. You know, you'll, you'll be surrounded with brothers on the same mission as you to make Christ known in our lives. Um, so we're just there to seek God. Uh, to seek Jesus and build our relationship with him. So please message um, the Ballers in God page on Instagram if you want in. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you guys do that. Ballers, go on there. I can't join, unfortunately, but you guys can. You know what I'm saying? So you guys can be there, be there, be in that community and make your faith stronger. Uh, Felix, thank you for once again. And everyone, hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Goodbye. God bless. Take care.